Welcome everyone to an Ophelia Jungle Educational. In this video we are going to explain Ophelia in detail, showing jungle rotations as well as tips and tricks for the hero to optimize your gameplay. Now before we get started, as always I would greatly appreciate it if you like the content to smash that subscribe button and drop a like on the video. Thank you so much and let's get started with the video. So we're going to start here by explaining Ophelia's abilities in detail. So our first ability here is Nature's Wrath, has a mana cost of 120. Target an enemy unit to apply a tapering 16, 19, 22, 25% movement speed slow, and 16, 19, 22, 25 damage amplification to them for 5 seconds. This spell has a range of 700 and a cooldown of 11 seconds. So this spell is used for slowing down our opponent and amplifying our damage that we want to deal to bring them down quickly. Our second ability here is called Ophelia's Judgment with a mana cost of 175. Target a unit to judge them. If the target is an ally, teleports them back to your team's base after 5.5, 5, 5 4.5, and 4 seconds. Instantly teleports units you control. If the target is an enemy, deals 90, 160, 230, 300 magic damage. Cannot be used on lane creeps. Range of 600 with a cooldown of 16 seconds. So this is Ophelia, one of her damage sources here. It is a nuke, an instant damage nuke against enemies, and it is a way to teleport the units we command with our third ability, which we will talk in a second here, port those instantly to base to uh, heal them up. And we can also port allied heroes after a short delay there to the base. So a very useful tool there. Our third ability is Command. This is the core spell of Ophelia. Has a mana cost of 115. Target a neutral unit to take control of it permanently. You can control one, one, two, three units in this way simultaneously. The creatures you control receive a minimum base max health of 600, 800, or 600, 700, 800, 900, 0, 60, 90, 120 max health and 15, 20, 25, 30 movement speed. And we have a Staff of the Master upgrade here to this ability, which allows us to control Ancients, but they only receive a 10 movement speed bonus from Command. A very powerful effect there. The range of 600 and a cooldown of 15 seconds. Then our ultimate, Ophelia's Touch, mana cost of 400, activate to apply a 200, 300, 400 health heal to all allied heroes, and 600, 900, 1200, to minions you control with a cooldown of 120 seconds. This spell is global, it does not say there in the tooltip, but your heal will instantly heal all allies wherever they are on the map. So a very powerful team heal, which also heals our minions. So those are Ophelia's abilities. I'm going to now uh, talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Ophelia when we want to pick her up in our games and when we want to avoid picking up the Ophelia. So we'll first start with strengths here. So Ophelia has very strong early lane ganking capabilities and we can do that in conjunction with the item Veiled Rot. We are able to use Veiled Rot and hide both our hero and our creep army. We are able to gank lanes very early with the power of our command spell taking over those neutral creeps. Very, very strong ganker. Ophelia is a very strong tower pusher. She hits a peak uh, early in the game when she gets level four of that command. So level seven, we have that maxed out command. We take over three neutral creeps and we become the strongest hero on the map, able to push towers very, very quickly. Ophelia has strong team fighting presence. Um, she's able to outnumber the enemy with her creep army and with the combination of her Ophelia's touch and something like an astrolabe, uh, we're able to heal and sustain ourselves, our army, and our teammates uh, for constant team fighting action. We have single target lockdown 
with our Nature's Wrath spell. That in conjunction with our Ophelia's Judgment and the damage from our creeps and their abilities. Able to lock down single targets and burst them down very quickly. I discussed uh, the ultimate there having the ability to have a global heal. We're able to assist allies from across the map when they get in danger. Able to potentially save them in sticky situations. And then with our second spell, the Ophelia's Judgment, able to port allies back to the base so they are able to regen and possibly TP back into lanes and, and team fights. A lot of strengths there for the Ophelia. She is a very powerful jungler. Now we'll discuss some of the weaknesses when we would uh, try to avoid picking up the Ophelia. So against heavy AoE style of lineups, um, they are able to kill our creeps. So uh, just to take a look here, some heroes that come to mind with some heavy anti-push style are the heroes like Draconis, Alonia, heroes like Behemoth that get amplified damage on their shockwave from the creep army. These are just some that come to mind. Very, very powerful at defending towers uh, and defending pushes. So if we see those style of heroes in our game, you might have a difficult time tower pushing in the early game. Some more counters to Ophelia are heroes with neutral counters. So heroes that can isolate the creeps. Heroes like Glacius with her ice imprisonment, able to freeze the creep for an extended period of time. Creeps get frozen for 10 seconds. Heroes like Voodoo Jester with the Acid Cocktail uh, being able to stun creeps for 5 seconds with that Q spell there, the Acid Cocktail. And heroes like Parasite able to infest our neutral creeps and be very destructive to us. Now this one you could argue Parasite is not the hardest counter to in Ophelia, but still very disruptive and annoying to play against. And of course, without mentioning o Plague Rider, uh, probably the hardest counter to Ophelia with the Plague Carrier being able to one-shot all of her neutral creeps, as well as if Ophelia does decide to go for that Staff of the Master to take over the Ancient Creeps, the Plague Carrier is still one-shotting the Ancient Creeps. So a very strong counter to Ophelia. Now the Extinguish, even with the level 4, you are not able to... Uh, to destroy the Ophelia minions. I actually made sure to test that out uh, not that long ago, so I am confident in saying the Extinguish does not work against Ophelia's minions, so only the Plate Carrier there, but still very, very powerful counterpick against, uh, against an Ophelia. And also Slippery Heroes, heroes that are hard to lock down, uh, and heroes that are able to disrupt our creeps simultaneously. So heroes like the Magmus having an AoE stun, having that disjoint, very slippery hero with the steam bath as well. Heroes like the Bubbles, very hard to lock down Bubbles with both the Shell Surf and the Take Cover. He has lots of AoE um, on top of the Song of the Sea being able to silence our creep army. So these style of heroes, very slippery, very hard to catch, very difficult for our creep army in team fights as well. So those are the uh, most significant weaknesses of, of Ophelia when you would look to try to avoid picking her up in your games. But overall, a very, very powerful jungler if you're able to master her um, as she is uh, arguably a little bit of a higher skill cap style of hero with the multi-unit control, but very rewarding to play once you are able to get the hang of her and master the Ophelia. So now I think it's time we will jump into a practice mode game. We will get into the uh, jungle rotations here for Ophelia. So we'll go ahead and get that practice mode game loaded up. And for this jungle rotation, um, as always, I'm going to be showing you guys the uh, the most efficient farming methods with an Ophelia and how we can maximize our farming potential. Now, again, uh, for the sake of the jungle rotation, it's really just going to be showcasing the farming aspect. Now, with Ophelia, she is... Uh, 
Uh, arguably the most active style of jungler she can gank very, very early, very effectively, very powerful ganker. So uh, we will definitely be looking to do that do. once we get to the part two video where I'll showcase to you done. guys uh, playing against real players. So there will be people to gank, to but for the sake of the practice mode game, we're just going to be showcasing As to you guys the farming game. aspect of Ophelia. Uh, it's not the fastest farming jungler, but she can keep up in the early game with some of the other farming style of heroes. And the difference with Ophelia is she is going to be different every single game you play her. The jungle spawns will heavily influence how your jungle will go. So what that means is when we get Vagabond leaders, Vulture Lords, and Catmans, we're going to be looking to farm and, and take stacks. When we get primarily Skeleton Kings and Minotaurs, we're going to be looking to try to set up ganks with those creeps. Now, with that being said, we're always going to be stacking the jungle. I'm going to be showing you guys that in this uh, jungle rotation. We're always going to be stacking the jungle camps. We're going to be looking for those farming creeps early on. We want the Vagabond Leaders and the Vulture Lords. Those are, are going to be used to take out stacks. And when we get Minotaurs and Skeleton Kings later on, we're going to be using that to start our snowballs start our ganks and tower pushes so before the jungle spawns here um, as always we save extra gold uh, a strategy that i have done for a year so going back to tournaments back in all the way to 2014 2015 is i would take 200 of my gold and I would invest that into my suicide or offlane player. I would give them either six blights or a health pot and a blight. So a lot of the times this extra 200 gold, I will give that over to my offlane player so that he can have a better chance at winning his lane. And as an Ophelia, you don't really need any kind of items to jungle, at least early on. But we do want to be building towards our Ring of Sorcery as our first item. Every single game, we're going to be going for Ring of Sorcery. It is the most powerful early game item on Ophelia, giving that mana to our creeps, which allows us to constantly keep using the creeps, uh, the spells from those hard camp creeps. So this extra 200 gold uh, can definitely, we can save it for ourselves, but we can also give it to our offlane player with extra regen. Now we will be buying Blights, a Mana Pot, a Mark of the Novice. This will be built towards our Mana Ring, a Minor Totem, which we will use towards our Astrolabe later on. It's a very efficient uh excuse me stat item there for the early game and we buy a ward of revelation most of the time we will need the ward of revelation to unblock camps but even if they do not block our camps the ward of revelation is always going to be very useful to us because we're going to want to want to set up ganks on the lanes and we can use the ward of revelation to try to counter the enemy's vision so if we want to gank the short lane they will most likely have vision here or here somewhere in the area to protect them from our ganks and we can use that word of revelation to see if they have wards and also somewhere in the mid lane if we want to set up a gank from behind in the mid lane so having the word of revelation uh, in my opinion is always good to buy uh, because we can use that for not only uh, dewarding our camps but also for dewarding wards of vision that are going to allow us to set up ganks so now we can start the jungle rotation in a second here. So you can start on either hard camp. It's, I don't think it's really correct or wrong to start on either one. But what we're going to do is we're going to start by farming one of the hard camps. We're going to get the Vagabond Leader spawn here. So uh, before we get any further, uh, I'm sure you guys are wondering, how is it I keybind my creeps? So we always, I always start by binding all my units to one. Bind my hero and any units I control in control one. So later on, we're going to get two and three creeps. We're going to always put all of them in our control one group. We're going to put only our creeps in control two. And then once we get two and three creeps, what we will do is we will bind every creep individually to three, four, and five. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to bind them in the order we want to use them. So I will talk about that later, but we will individually bind every creep, and then we will have only creeps in two and everything in control one. 
So we go ahead and we start by finishing this camp. We don't need to use the Vagabond Leader spell. And this is very important here. We're going to send our hero to stack the two camps and our creep to stack one. So I will try to show this to you guys. We'll start here by stacking the hard camp and then the easy camp. We run this way. Then we run our creep into the medium camp and we will stack that. So since we have a Vagabond leader with a very low cooldown spell, we're going to work on the double stacked easy camp here to start things off. And also, the main reason we're doing that is because we know we have a Vulture Lord spawn in our hard camp. We're going to save that for later to work on a triple stack medium camp. So I will show you guys that very shortly. But for starters, we will do the double stacked easy camp. So this will get us the level 2. we we'll wait for the spell to come back up. And we will clean up this camp. Now we have one more spell here on the Vagabond Leader. And what we want to do now... <laughs> I actually cancelled my hit a couple times there, but that's okay. We're going to use the spell there, and then we're going to use the full HP of the creep to just kill some of the creeps. We take over the Vulture Lord. And we want to triple stack the entire jungle. We want to have all the camps stacked. And then we are going to tornado the... Uh, triple stacked medium camp here so again i'm going to be stacking the entire jungle don't be worried it's just fine to have stacks as an ophelia so we go ahead we stack the medium and the hard with our hero and then we stack the other hard camp with the vulture lord now i will show you guys camping the rune so we spawn a dd rune here but we will not be taking that we'll just be walking to it as i show you guys in all my jungle educationals we do not take the rune to influence our jungling now if this was a real game we would see if our mid player has um has his bottle if not we would take the rune in a real game but uh what we do here with the vulture lord when we use the vulture lord to farm we always want the creep to be out of this, uh, out of the leash range of the jungle camp. So we want the creep to be far enough back that it won't get attacked by the camp. And we're going to spawn the tornado here. But first we aggro the camp with our hero. And then we move the creep back and we spawn the tornado. I personally like to keybind the tornado so I can move it easier. I keybind this to four, which I'm currently not using. I don't have... Uh, enough creeps so i have the creep in control two my hero and creep in one and the tornado in four just a small little efficiency thing that i like to do we always hit the wild hunters here and we just continue to kite and this vulture lord will, will help us take out the entire triple stack medium camp so it's very very strong we're going to hit level four just from doing this triple medium camp and we'll be level four before three minutes so very good farming efficiency here and most of the farming junglers will be around level 4 at 3 minutes as well. So we are upkeeping our GPM with some of the faster farming junglers. Even heroes like Legionnaire, Draconis, uh, Solstice, you guys name it. We're going to just work on using the HP of the creep. Then we take over another farming creep here. And we're going to continue farming. Our next goal here is to reach level 5. And that's when we hit... Our next power spike, we're going to get the second creep. And once we have two creeps, we're going to start to uh, be a bigger threat in terms of ganking and also farming with the two creeps. And we're going to be working towards our uh, Ring of Sorcerer here. We've upgraded our Mark of the Novice into an Amulet of Exile. And we're now working on the 950 gold for the Pickled Brain. We take over the next Vagabond leader here. And we're going to kill off the rest of that hard camp. And now what we're going to do is we're going to continue making stacks here. So we stack the easy camp. We stack the medium. We're getting really close to level 5. So we're going to use this Vagabond Leader to finish the double stacked easy camp here. Once we get level 5, we'll take over the next creep in the hard camp here. So we'll just continue to kite this. Wait for the cooldowns. We have the blight so we can tank with our hero a little bit. We want the creep to... Uh, stay relatively healthy as much as possible here we get level five we instantly move over to the hard camp we take over the next creep and we'll use this vagabond leader to finish off the remainder of the easy camp here so we're already level five under five minutes we're doing pretty well here and we're getting really close to our uh, ring of sorcery so we have another stack to work on here we have lots of vagabond leaders so we have lots of low cooldown nukes we'll just continue to kite this camp Wait for the cooldowns to come up, kill them uh, slowly. And it's okay if we lose our Vagabond Leader here because we have the next camp next to us. We're going to swap out our low health creep here. So it's just fine. 
This camp, uh, we actually don't get it to respawn, but that's okay. We take over a Skeleton King here. We have our Ring of Sorcery now, so we can keep using the Vagabond Leader nukes. And we are eventually going to exhaust this creep's HP and take over the next Skeleton King. So again, it's completely fine that we are taking damage on that creep. We already know that we want to take over the Skeleton King. And we have our ultimate now. So as anytime you have your ultimate, you always want to be keeping an eye on your the HP pools of the heroes on the left of your screen. You'll see if enemies start to take damage. Always be watching the lanes while we farm. And make sure that our teammates don't need our ultimate because it is global. So we always have presence uh, even when we're farming. And now what we're doing uh, is just farming for level 7. Level 7 is another is, is going to be our biggest power spike. This is when we're going to get to control 3 creeps. So we're going to be very, very strong once we hit level 7. And we're going to try to do that before the 7 minute mark. So we are 3 quarters of the way here to level 7. We're going to work on the easy camp. And then part of the hard camp should get us the experience we need for that third creep. So we have our sorcery boots completed. Next we will be building towards an astrolabe. So we could start to buy pieces towards our astrolabe. Next, we kill that creep and we have enough XP for level seven. We now have a Vagabond leader. And at this point, this is when we can look to go gank. We will just see what creeps we have over here. Uh, I did talk about once we get to the level seven mark, this is when we want skeleton kings and minotaurs. Those are the best creeps for setting up ganks. Um, so we will use the Vagabond leader here to do some damage and then we will kill it off. and. How you do that is you click on the creep and you press R and it says activate to instantly kill this unit. Cannot be activated if the unit has received hero damage in the last 10 seconds. So always be careful that the creeps didn't take damage from enemy players. But if not, we are able to instantly destroy our creep, which I did there with the Vagabond Leader. And then I will take over the Minotaur as my third creep. So again, I'll go over the key bindings here. I have everything in control one. Uh, we take away Ophelia. We just have the creeps. That's our control two. Then we have Skeleton King number one is three, Skeleton King number two is four, and Minotaur is five. And the reason we do that is because we're going to run at people, we're going to grip, grip, and then stun once the Minotaur gets in range. That's going to be the order we use them in, and we throw the slow in on top for extra damage amplification. And hopefully once we get to the part two education, I can show you guys how I do it very, very quickly. A lot of practice, but once you guys get your practice in, you'll be microing. Uh, just like me in no time. I, I have plenty of faith in you guys. Ophelia is just a hero of practice. Practicing microing. Uh, the more you, the more you do it, the easier it'll become. So again, this is the end of the jungle rotation. I just wanted to show you guys up until level seven. I'll show you guys here. I'm going to move all the creeps individually. So three, four, five. This is three, four, five, and then we use stomp. Nothing to, to grip, but you guys get the picture. So we can move the creeps very quickly and efficiently once we have them all individually key bound. But that's the jungle rotation. We were level 7 before 7 minutes. This is when we hit our biggest power spike. We are we are no doubt the strongest hero on the map right now. We have three creeps that each deal uh, between 65 and 72 damage. So a lot of damage. We have our hero. We are essentially, I, I like to call it we're like four heroes in one, at least at this part of the uh, part of the game. But we are very, very powerful. So next step is to set up ganks and tower pushes. So that will do it for the jungle rotation. Again, on the Hellborn side, it's more or less the same thing. Um, and every game is going to be different with Ophelia. There's not going to ever be the same game. Uh, it's always going to depend on the creep spawns, how you move around the map, how you farm in the jungle. So some games you'll be farming very well, and some games you'll be farming slower. Uh, it just, again, comes down to... Uh, the jungle creeps. So next I want to show you guys the different item builds we can do on Ophelia. Now Ophelia she is very traditional in the sense that um, you're going to be building a lot of the same items uh, game to game but there are going to be some differences depending on what you play against. So in the early early game we are almost always going to be going Ring of Sorcery, either that into Sorcery Boots, into Astrolabe. And the reason for that is for our Creep Army. Our Creep Army loves the mana and the heals. We always want our Creeps to be uh, to stay alive as long as possible. So these two items are fantastic for every single game. Um, the rest is going to uh, the rest is going to change from game to game.
So this is our first item build. I'm going to talk to you guys uh, with, uh, with four different item builds that I think are very good. So this is the first one. This is what I like to call the high ground early win Ophelia build. So with this build, we are looking to, and, and with most Ophelia games, we are looking to win the game uh, within the first 30 minutes. We do not really want games to go longer than 30 minutes as Ophelia. But if they do, we will we'll just be forced to build into later game style items. So this is the first item build. Again, this is what I like to call the high ground early win Ophelia build. We build into Sorcery Boots and Astrolabe first, then we build into items like Abyssal Skull and Barrier Idol. The Abyssal Skull is a very strong team fighting aura. It gives damage to our creeps as well as lifesteal to the melee ones. It allows us to do Kongor very early on with our team, and then we get Barrier Idol to go high ground, as I, as I called it in the, the name, the high ground early win. So the Barrier Idol, we pick that up against lots of anti-push and to protect our creeps and our teammates so that we can team fight very strong. So this is the first item build. We will go with the next item build here. And this one I like to call the Team Armor Ophelia build. So we break our sorcery boots into plated greaves. We now have a ring of sorcery astrolabe and plated greaves and then we build into abyssal skull and demonic and we get this build against very high physical damage enemy teams so we bulk up on armor as you can see we have 38 armor very very powerful armor uh armor build and this will be amplifying our team as well and our creep army so very strong our next item build here is okay i believe that's complete this is what I like to call the Utility Ophelia build. So again, we have the Sorcery Boots and the Astrolabe. And then we're going to build into items like Energizer. This allows us uh, to set up ganks with the extra movement speed, as well as uh, buff our creeps and creep waves for tower pushes. Very strong item in the early game. And then we are going to build into items such as Tablet of Command and Storm Spirit into a Sheepstick in the late game. So again, these are very utility style items. This helps not only ourselves but our teammates with positioning um, for both offensive and defensive. We would sometimes only buy one of these items, the tablet or the storm, but we can also buy both depending on the game. And then Sheepstick, a very, very powerful late game item. So again, this is the utility Ophelia build. And then I'm going to talk to you guys with one more item build. So uh here we go i'm going to remove that very riddle from the build we have uh this is what i like to call the tanky team sustain ophelia build so we are tanky in the sense that our hp pool is very high we have an astrolabe and steam boots on top of the banner ring and then we have a gnome's wisdom for the early game instead of the abyssal skull so this is going to increase our healing output uh you know to be honest we could also probably throw in that sacrificial stone uh, that is a newer item which amplifies healing by 20%. So you could probably even throw a Sacrificial Stone in there on top of this build with the Gnome's Wisdom. Um, but then we would also build into a Demonic as well to bulk up our team. Uh, and we would not get the Abyssal Skull with this build because the auras, uh, the armor auras do not stack with the Gnomes and the Abyssal Skull. But the Gnomes would amplify uh, give us lots of healing and shield. So very, very strong against magic uh, style lineups. So that is the fourth build here for Ophelia. And uh, these item builds are just going to depend on what enemies you're facing. So again, every single game, the mana ring or sorcery boots into Astrolabe is very, very good. You can do that every single game. And then the third item that we buy and later will always depend on what role we want to play in that game and what enemies we are facing. So we can choose to bulk up on uh, physical armor or magic armor, and then we can also uh, decide whether we want to take objectives like Congor or force high ground pushes very early on. And if neither of those are really the option, then we can go for that utility style build, depending on if we're facing enemies such as heroes like Tempest and Kronos if we need tablets or storms for our allies or sheep sticks for locking down very difficult uh, to kill carry heroes. So those will be the item builds here for Ophelia. Um, now I will talk to you guys about the late game 
item build uh, item choices <clears throat> so again with Ophelia we're really trying to end the game uh, before 30 minutes we really don't want to be building into late game items but there will be occasions where the games will go long so items like sheep stick very powerful late game lockdown item and we would buy this versus uh, very hard to catch carries and also for stopping shrunken heads from being activated the the sheep effect is very very powerful on top of the lockdown that our creep army uh, has uh, similarly, items like Hellflower. Um, the difference with Hellflower versus Sheepstick is Hellflower will amplify our damage. So we'll get 15% damage amp from the Hellflower on top of the, I believe it was 25%, here's Ophelia, 25% from our Nature's Wrath. So if we use both of those abilities together, we get 40% damage amplification. Very, very high extra damage. So very powerful on top of uh, on top of the intelligence and uh, attack speed. So we get a lot of extra damage as an Ophelia. Very strong for late game. I talked about demonic breastplate. Very strong for high ground pushing, but also for team armor armor versus physical damage lineups. Very strong late game item. And then situationally, items like storm spirit and sand scepter. So storm. Sp Storm Spirit would be for protecting our carry, and we can use that in conjunction with our Ophelia's Judgment. So we would use the Ophelia's Judgment first, then Storm Spirit them to prevent two seconds of that send home duration, and then we can send them home uh, after the uh, the debuff, debuff finishes there. So very very powerful combination, and then Sand Scepter we would get that versus Sheep Sticks, uh, Barbed Armors. Uh, or any significant style of buff that we have to deal with something like a martyr wings being able to purge that or a monarch chrysalis come to mind but there are many of course sand scepter has many uses and that's more of a niche item for late game so those are going to be the late game item decisions uh, I, I'm not going to discuss staff of the master here too much it is uh, it is a strong effect and you are able to legacy a teammate that is always going to be an option as an Ophelia but in my experience, I find that Arcane Bomb is very strong against um, against Staff of the Master on Ophelia. So I, I personally do not like to invest uh, the gold into a legacy. I feel that when you have Ancient Creeps instead of the Hard Camp Creeps, uh, you, you lack the crowd control that you want as an Ophelia, being able to lock people down with Skeleton Kings and Minotaurs. The Ancient Creeps, however, are very strong. Uh, for pushing building so if you're able to get a staff very early on it is very powerful but again be wary of arcane bomb so that's going to be the late game items and i'll finish off here with some tips and tricks that i didn't get to show you guys in the jungling portion so i mentioned to you guys or i showed you guys efficient stacking and how to clear those stacks as an ophelia um, you can use the send home the Ophelia's Judgment in combination with heroes like Gladiator using the showdown on that hero. You can send them to base and then bring them right back so they can refill their bottles, they can heal up in the fountain for a couple of seconds. Very powerful uh, combination with a hero like Gladiator. Another uh, situation this spell being using the send home is very strong is with a hero like Dr. Repulsor. So you can send Dr. Repulsor home, he can fly in bait spells deal damage with his ultimate and then he gets ported back to the base so he can regen his mana again uh, very very powerful combination with the doctor repulsor um, i talked about using staff for taking over ancients some of the late game creeps that we want to take over as an ophelia the longer the game progresses uh, we can take over creeps such as the wolf commander that creep gives us a damage aura very very strong to buff our carry i believe it's 33 percent uh we can take over ice ogres they give armor uh that we can spread to all our allies very very strong late game and also werebeast enchanter uh that creep we can use to grant vision of an area very very strong and underrated creep uh in late game i showed you guys how to, or I will be also showing in the part two how to micro your full army, 
but I did explain to you guys the key bindings that I use. So uh, I think it's very important that you key bind each creep individually. That will definitely help uh, with microing. And another trip you, uh, trick you can use is if you're playing against a parasite who's trying to infest your creeps, you can take over an alchemist ogre, and that creep has an alchemist bones-like effect, which which transmutes any neutral creep. So you can transmute creeps that par uh, parasite actually infests. So alchemist ogre is very good against parasites. But uh, that's going to do it for tips and tricks for Ophelia. If you enjoyed this educational, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will be doing a part two follow-up video here where I'm going to analyze a replay or two and explain my decisions that I make throughout the match. So again, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one.